Hey everybody, Sean here, and I hope you're doing well. The fact is that many people other than myself have been exposing Isaiah Saldivar and the other demon slayers recently. And if you go online and do a search, you can find many videos that show the problems with his false teachings and many issues with him being a leader and teaching other Christians. And of course, we have 15 videos that show his errors from scripture here on Revealing Truth. A lot of this has to do with this new movie coming out in March in theaters across the United States and the terrible influence it's going to have not only on the unsaved but for those that are new in the faith or those that may have been brought up in a Christian family and think that they're saved but aren't actually yet born again. While going through the comments, someone mentioned that they removed the part about Isaiah choking the demon out of the lady that we exposed in this video. And sure enough, if you go to his page, you'll see that that part has been clipped out. See, funny story, I haven't shared this part. See, funny story, I haven't shared this part. Interestingly enough, when he was telling the story, they were all laughing about this, about the fact that he straddled a lady and tried to choke the demon out of her. This was done to the point where she was actually turning blue. She's turning blue because I'm literally choking her. She's turning blue because I'm literally choking her. This was supposedly just a few days after his born again experience. Maybe he removed that part because people outside his crowd can see that nobody newly born again and full of the Holy Spirit would do such a thing. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Is Isaiah even saved? Well, that's debatable. But scripture is clear that a good tree does not produce bad fruit like choking someone. In his Sid Roth testimony, strange things were even said, like that he was prophesying over animals. Yeah, so two days, about two, well, it was, now it was three days later, didn't sleep. My uncle was in ministry, said, okay, you're talking for 14 hours straight. You're seeing demons and angels. You're prophesying over the animals. You're prophesying over the animals. I mean, you're just going crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. The Holy Spirit would not leave someone to prophesy over an animal. And if you haven't heard his testimony, please allow me to play this short clip now and you can decide if this sounds authentic or if it's just another story on the Sid Roth Show to sell a product. His sister is giving him the business. Come to church, come to, I'll go one time. What happened? Yeah, so I was raised in church like many people watching. 16, I decided to become an atheist and stop going to church at 19 years old. I'd graduated high school at 16. I was a month from graduating college at 19 to become a police officer, go to the academy with an administration of justice degree. And my little sister for six months said, just go to church one time. And she kept saying, I'll never bug you again, just go one time. So I said, I'm gonna go. And I told my girlfriend this just to shut her up so she'll stop bugging. I'll never forget this said, walking through the door of that church, this thought came into my mind. This will be the last time I ever stepped foot in a church building. And I walked in there, I sat in this mega church in the very back where they rope it off. I said, I'm not gonna listen to this. I was making fun of the people on stage. After the preacher got done preaching, I felt, now this might strike some unbelief in the audience here, but I felt something pulling on me as if you were grabbing my shirt and pulling me to the altar. Now I didn't know what it was, I just knew something is pulling me and I, I couldn't fight it to go to the altar. So he wasn't making the choice. God was forcing this atheist to come and be saved. And I went forward to that altar and I stood there and I said something that's gonna make a lot of religious people upset right here. I said, God, I don't effing believe in you. I actually cussed at God, I didn't know. You know, the Bible says, while well, we were sinners, Christ proved his love for us. But I said this, said, if you're real, if you are the God they say you are, and I just feel it right now, I said, I will lay down everything. I will give you my life. I will break up with the girls with for four years. I will quit my job, that my dream job in law enforcement I'm about to get hired as. I'll leave everything, I'll move out of state. And so he F-bombs God and take note, he says he'll leave everything. That's 100%. And the reason I was so bold, Sid, was I didn't believe God was real. So I could just say <laughs> yeah, whatever I want, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And in that moment, I said that, again, an atheist didn't believe, the audible voice of God. We're not talking about a small voice. We're not talking about an inward. The audible voice of God from heaven said, Isaiah, I don't want 99.9% .9 of you. I want everything. Why did God audibly, by the way, say that? Isaiah said already that he'd give him everything. Isaiah didn't say 99.9%. .9 
And if you give me my, your life, I will use you to preach my gospel to all nations. And God, I, I was in a trance-like state. I wasn't, I didn't feel I was at the altar anymore. I was in, it was, I just saw glowing bright lights. Like I was in another dimension and I just heard the Lord speak to me and God began to show me in visions. Everything I'm doing right now, I saw 10 years ago, the traveling, the preaching, the miracles, the deliverances, revival in my home. I started seeing that that night. Um, one thing that I wanted to say that was very incredible that began to happen when I came out of this vision, literal dirt started coming out of my eyes. I'm not talking spiritual. I'm not talking about mm -hmm. in the spirit. I'm a, I was an atheist five seconds ago. Dirt was coming out of my eyes and God began to remove the dirty scales that the world and, and lust and everything had put on me. And I was born again, speaking in tongues, trying to cover my mouth so my girlfriend wouldn't hear. I mean, no one was laying hands on me. I didn't know what it was. I had only heard tongues one time in my life. Mm. And now I'm sitting there oh, speaking violently in tongues and the Holy Spirit just really changed my life. So there's his testimony. He F-bombed God and puts God to the test. No repentance, no grief over sin. And I guess God felt obligated to prove himself to be real to Isaiah. And then dirt literally comes out of his eyes and he starts speaking in tongues. I would really like to talk to the pastors at that church to confirm that story. Wow. Sid does a blurb comparing his experience to the experience with Saul of Tarsus and then says this. It gets even better. He started seeing through spiritual eyes for the first time in his life. You, you knew things about people. You, saw, you actually could see demons, am I right? Yeah, so when the service got over, I didn't recognize anybody, Said I, didn't, I only recognized my sister. I said, I gotta go home. They said, what happened to you? I said, I don't know, I'm a different person. I am a different, I'm talking about, I didn't recognize colors. I said, what colors? I don't think I've ever seen that. It was just blue. I just, everything was new. So he gets born again and suddenly couldn't recognize anyone and couldn't recognize colors? Sounds more like a curse than a born again experience. I got home, didn't sleep for three days, but what happened was the next day I went to college, I got on my college campus set and I started seeing demons and angels. And I'm not talking about just in the spirit. I was seeing them like if I was seeing you all around my college campus, warring over people. I started hearing voices. Well, yeah, not sleeping for three days. People hallucinate and hear stuff. I didn't know they were words of knowledge, but getting words of knowledge for kids around me, my teacher, I looked at the guy next to me in class, I'll never forget, and I said, what, well, what happened to you? He said, what do you mean? And I started hearing about what he had gone through as a kid and what he had been through, words of knowledge. I thought he was talking to me because I didn't know how radical this no, no. was. Quite the story indeed. He goes on to talk about casting out demons and explains his product about him teaching you all this stuff, but we're gonna skip that. My friends, please do not go to this movie and support this false movement. And stop following all these demon slayers because they are leading you astray. If you call yourself a Christian and have had a demon actually cast out of you, then you don't have the Holy Spirit in you yet, and you need to repent and truly put your faith in Christ. And when you are born again, you will be a new creation, the old will be gone, and the new Spirit of Christ will come. And as scripture says, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And that's God's Holy Spirit being greater than the demons in this world. And he's not sharing the temple of your body with anyone. Yes, as a Christian, the enemy will influence you. How did he influence Eve to sin? He spoke lies and confusion to her, but he didn't enter her body. And when he tempted Jesus, he did the same thing. He spoke to him, tempted him, and tried to persuade him. I'm praying for all of you that are being fooled by this demon-slaying crowd and hope that by God's grace, he will set you free from this movement like he's done for so many already. With that being said, we're going to leave it here for today. But as always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.